Uh, this is what Islam says about LGBT, right? Islam says that there has to be some guidelines for intimacy, for marriage, for sex. There has to be some guidelines. You know, last time in Toronto, the parliament of the world's religions, there was a gay imam that inspired us so much. And your name, sir? I am David. I'm Matt. Okay, assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you. I'm here at the parliament in Chicago 2023. Brother David and Brother Matt, Matt. or Dawood. Dawood, oh, Dawood, like Prophet Dawood. So they are here and they came uh, to take a short interview and also to share their faith and inshallah, God willing, to learn a few things about Islam. Yes. All right, great. Uh, so what faith background that you guys belong to? Christianity, uh, liberation Christianity. Yes. I see. So if you have to have like a 30 second mission statement of your faith background, what would you say? Uh, I would say that we are here to honor all people, to love all people, to elevate all people, and to bring healing to Mother Earth. I would say uh, speak the good news to the poor and to set the captives free. Okay, great. And if you ask me that question, okay, Sabil, so my name is Sabil, yes. right? Yes. Okay, what does Islam teach or what does Islam preach? We say that there is only one God and that God is not an idol, not a human animal trinity, that God is the absolute creator. The way that every prophet, every messenger used to call their people to worship one God. Secondly, I would say that God loves humanity. So to love, to guide humanity, we say God did not come down and become a human. He remained God and then he chose from the humans, messengers and prophets. So Abraham and Moses and Jesus and Muhammad, peace be upon them, were some of those prophets. Number three of the four really quickly is, humanity needs guidance. You know, when we uh, learn how to drive, we have to read a book, yeah. Rules of the Road. So we need guidance in all walks of life. We need guidance in how to form societies, political, economic, social, matrimonial, educational systems. So we say that complete, comprehensive, uh, practical, beneficial guidance God gave in the form of a scripture, which is the Quran, given to Muhammad, peace be upon him. And then the last important point is that humanity, we want to go to paradise by God's mercy. How to, how to go about doing that? We say that personal accountability, that nobody dies for us, there is no sacrifice of a person, a prophet, a human. We say that what we do is what we bear. If we have the right belief, worshipping only one God, not taking Jesus, Moses, idol, animals as God, submitting to one God, and doing the deeds that God wants us to do, if we fall short, we ask for God's forgiveness. So having the right belief, doing good deeds, God's mercy comes into play. That's the way to go to paradise. And what does paradise look like? Paradise is a place... Yeah, sure. So there is a detailed description of paradise in the Quran and through the sayings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So paradise is a place of reward. This, this world is a preparation ground. God wants, us, God wants to see that are we worshipping him, doing the deeds, helping humanity, living as brothers and sisters in justice, morality, unity and peace, or are we rejecting God? So paradise is a place of reward. So paradise is a place in which any wish, um, physical wish, spiritual wish, any wish, God is going to make it possible. It's a place of reward. Means we will have the best families, the best mansions, uh, the best food, the best clothes, the best chairs, anything that we can desire, God will make that happen. Uh, can be part of the beloved community um, if they will be open to their brothers and sisters, as you said, we are brothers and sisters, we are family. And so our, our desire is to experience that here. Mm -hmm. So what we say is that by God's guidance, we can form uh, like a mini paradise on earth. All right. Yes. But the ultimate paradise that is not going to have any terminal illnesses, no wars, no oppression, no racism, no Islamophobia, no anti-Semitism, uh, no old age, no dying, no death, no suffering and all the positive things that we desire, that is the ultimate paradise. Over here, by God's guidance, we can fight to bring, uh, you know, justice and peace and equality, right? Yes. Yeah. So the paradise is a place not only of the physical desires getting fulfilled, it also a place in which spiritual desires, like being close to God, 
uh, actually seeing God. So the spiritual desires are many, many times much more than the physical desires. So at the end of the day, to go to paradise, we need to make sure that we do something and we have the right belief. Believing in only one God, taking Jesus as a prophet along with the rest of the prophets and doing the work that God wants us to do. If we do that, my friends, then God's mercy comes into play. And that's the I, pathway to that, paradise. That, that's, how, that's how I see it too, except I see it for this world. Mm -hmm. And that, um, that the beloved community paradise can be entered into in this world, even for people who are atheists, uh, people who are agnostics, or people of every religion can be a part of the beloved community and experience paradise for their families, for themselves here and in this world. Yeah, so what you're saying is what I mentioned. By us implementing God's guidance, by implementing the solutions, by implementing the justice for all humans, doesn't matter faith or no faith, we can create a society that is going to be the ideal society with God's guidance, right? Yes. But paradise is a place outside of this world. After we die, according to Islam, every single person would be brought back to life. There would be a day of resurrection and a day of judgment. You know, just like when we went to schools and colleges, there was an evaluation at the end of the semester. So our grand evaluation of how we live this life would be in the hereafter. And the way to go to paradise there would be only two ways. Having the right belief, doing good deeds, then God's mercy comes into play. Okay, really quickly, right? Uh, what book that you guys believe in? Well, we extract truth from every source wherever truth exists. Mm -hmm. uh, one of our prophets by the name of Howard Thurman, he said, a thing is not true because it is in our religion, but the thing is true because religion embraces it. And so we, we find hope in the Holy Scriptures of various types, but also we can find hope in you as a manifestation of paradise. You as a human being are a manifestation of God. And so if you are representing truth, then you are paradise for us. And we are part of beloved community together because we accept one another. We accept people on the margins as he's talking about, the people who are excluded, the people who are poor, the people who are oppressed. So include, so that would, as he mentioned, people with disabilities, people who are racial and ethnic minorities, people who are lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and in, inquiring, um, people who are rejected by their communities, they make our community. Sure, so what I'm saying is, that's a good concept, right? That's a good concept. We will come to the LGBT, okay? <laughs> really quickly, what Islam says, we have a brochure up there. You guys can take the brochure. So the concept, the wall that you guys want to build, Islam already built it many times in the past. So it's nothing that, you know, like a wall that we have to go towards and we have to build. Islam gave the recipe how to build the wall. And many times in the past, Muslims have already built it in which there was no hierarchy. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was a poverty was done away with. Women's oppression was removed. Yeah. You know, minorities, they had the rights. So Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in his lifetime, and then the later Muslims, we already built it. Yeah. So we don't have to go and extract and do the research and start from scratch. We already have the recipe in the Quran yeah. and in the prophetic sayings, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So the, lit you. So the literature is here. I would really like you yeah. guys to take it, right? Thank you. And uh, really quickly about LGBT that you mentioned. Uh, this is what Islam says about LGBT, right? Islam says that there has to be some guidelines for intimacy, for marriage, for sex. There has to be some guidelines. If there are no guidelines, it's a slippery slope. Because we just cannot go with the feelings that I feel this is right, then I should do it. We should go with, uh, you know, we should always go with what does God desire from us in any things that we do, any interaction or any action that we do. Because if we just go with the feeling, it will just harm the society. For example, if a person says, you know, I have a feeling towards a dog, I have a feelings towards a child, I have, uh, you know... Oh, but there's a difference no, there. I, because I, I, a dog and a child cannot give consent. Uh, they cannot say, yes, this is what I want. Yeah. Sure. It has to be consensual. 
You know, last time in Toronto, the Parliament of the World's Religions, there was a gay imam that inspired us so much because he showed us that he was forward thinking and that he could he could be a same sex uh, attracted person and still uh, have faith in God. So I was not done, right? People may have feelings towards an object or an animal or a child or suppose what if they have feeling towards their mother and if well, the mother gives the consent well and the child is 18 years of age well, then what one of them has power over the other doesn't yeah. matter it's and not the power the, either part. the mother has the power she's influencing their child but to be consensual but there have to be equal parties and um, enthusiastic consent too yeah it's yeah not just so a suppose yes no because there's so Under suppose power, there's the rest. No, so. suppose suppose if the child is old, more than 18, okay, let's say the yeah. child is 30, the mother is 50, and the mother says, you know what, no power, we are both equal when we are intimate. Yeah, Do you think and that's somebody right? is influencing somebody else. No, because of relational not, power, uh, so it's, it's very... No, so, so the point is this, but, yeah, okay, no. okay, what about uh, a brother and a sister who are, who are, you know, twins? Yeah. No, See, that's a hard no. That's a hard no. Why? See, the thing is, Why? is we're hard talking no. about people like, like, so, so I'm, I'm a heterosexual. I'm a cisgender heterosexual man, uh, attracted to my wife. I, I have only ever been attracted to women. But at the same time, I have a brother who is gay and I respect him and because he was born a way that I was not born. I do not have his challenges. He does not have my challenges. He's not attracted to women. I respect him and I love him and I'm glad that he's in the world. No, so, so my point is this, right? Both of you agree there have to be some guidelines between... Yes, so, 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 one guideline. Yeah. Okay. Never exploit or show power yeah. over so, so, somebody so, else. So exception. So there has to be some guideline. Twins, we say and you say right away, no, they cannot have sex together, right? Yep. So, so there's a guideline. Yeah. Mother, son, guideline. Yeah. A man and a dog, guidelines. If a person is exerting power over another person. Okay, suppose it's not power. Yeah, Let, let's take it's... no. Let's take the let's take the variation. Let's take the variable of power out of the equation. Then, then, a, then a, a man. Yeah, a man is hundred. A man and his sister. They are twins. Can they have sex? Can no. a man have sex with his sister? Yeah. No. Well, he can, but that doesn't make it right. There you go. So, according to you, but there you, are guidelines. You can have sex with a dog, but that doesn't yeah, yeah. make it right. There you go. What, sorry. So, so, what, so what I'm saying is... What wrong is the exercise of power no. over another. So, what I'm saying is, they're not exercising power over each other. See, we are taking the equation of power out of it. We are taking the equation of, you know, a uh, man and a they're dog out of it. I, I, yeah. I get what you're saying. So, so just, but, but even seduction is a use of yes. abuse of power. Yes. It's, it's not seduction. Okay, it fine. It is power. No, yeah. no, no. It's all power. Okay, yeah. listen, listen, guys. <laughs> if the man and his sister, twin sister, equal of age, right? Equal height, equal age, equal custom, equal culture, equal faith. They say we are having consensual sex together. Are you okay with that? No, because there there somebody go. is seducing somebody. No, no, okay. Suppose nobody's seducing. They say, you know what? We like each other. We want to have free society. We have feelings for each other. Nobody's seducing. Equally, we are partners in this. Yeah. Your system breaks if, right there. If it's unnatural, then there is an abuse of power in one way or another. No. Either it's the power of seduction or the power of threat. See, but it's no, always su an abuse suppose, of power. suppose if there is no threat, they both say, you know what? Freely, 100%. But in what world is there no threat? Huh? In what world is there no threat? Then, see, if we say power and threat, we can use exactly the same thing between any sexual situation that you bring in. If you say, you know what, two consensual adults, we can say there is always power, threat, dynamics involved in there. In any situation that you give, I can use exactly the same argument as you're giving two twins. So therein, therein is the breakdown of your worldview, right? So what we are saying is that God is the one who gives guidelines. If we obey by God's guidelines, that's when humans can be safe, productive, spiritual, guided, and by God's mercy, paradise. So guys, you know, it's, a, it's awesome that you guys stop by. I learned from what, what background that you are in. Yeah. Do take the Quran. It's free today. All right. Oh, we have the Quran. Oh, yeah. you do. We, well, yeah. I yeah. Have, I have it. I have it on my laptop. Okay. So because when I travel, I can't take too many books. You know, I, 
So, so, so besides the Quran, you know, what else we have is about a happy and harmonious home. Okay, so I have that I'm one. Not, my kids are already parents themselves, but I would take how this. About, I'll take this one. How about racism? Yes. How about uh, solutions? Racism. Yeah. About okay, so my my friend here, he, he has to have audio books. Yeah. Sure, sure. Okay. So, this don't work for me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, this one is about drug crisis and Islamic solutions. You know. Perfect, comprehensive, workable solutions. I'll just take one. Yeah. Okay, Thank that's you. fine. Right. Just take one. It has a telephone number in there. Do give us a call. The website is in there. Okay. May God guide and bless both of you. And you as yeah. well. All right. Take care, guys. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Too. Thank you. Take Thanks care. for yes. the conversation. Yeah, yeah. Exciting. Likewise. Sure, sure. Bye bye.